How's it going guys? Not going to be a lengthy clip here. The good news is that the US Samili actually does not give a fuck about all of the pedantic aspects of the antiarrhythmics like you might imagine. Okay, resources kind of blow these drugs up. I'll tell you exactly what you need to know and not waste your fucking time, all right? It's not my opinion. It's about what shows up on the NBME exams. That's what's tested. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. And find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, links down below. And find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. And now let's start the clip. 50-year-old woman, she has a 12-month history of ventricular tachycardia. She's had ringing of the ears, dizziness, and headache. She started taking an oral antiarrhythmic four months ago. Her platelet count is 90,000, normal range 150 to 450,000 per microliter. Questions just asking which of the following agents is most likely responsible for her findings, okay? So let's just walk through the answer choices here. Choice A, amiodarone, wrong fucking answer, okay? This is a potassium channel blocker. You need to know that this can cause thyroiditis, all right? It's 37 to 39% iodine by weight. Uh, thyroiditis, okay? So, so uh, dequervain, which is subacute granulomatous thyroiditis, postpartum thyroiditis, and then drug-induced amiodarone and lithium, very fucking high yield. There's, that's a long discussion, but you should know that it can be hypo or hyperthyroidism, and that even if the patient is hyperthyroid, Iodine uptake into the thyroid gland will be low in the setting of amiodarone or lithium, any drug-induced thyroiditis. Amiodarone can also cause hepatotoxicity, and it can cause uh, blue-black skin discoloration uh, with exposure to the sun, and it can also cause arrhythmia, okay, torsades, torsade de pointes, okay? Absolute nonsense in terms of how that's pronounced. I'm not fucking French, okay? But uh, torsade de pointes, okay? Torsades, that's how, uh, that's an important uh, adverse effect of amiodarone. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, flocainide, wrong answer. This is a sodium channel blocker. Now, as I prefaced with, the US simile doesn't actually give a fuck that you know about OMG, like type 1A, 1B, 1C, etc. for the sodium channel blockers. They really don't care. Okay, across all the NBME questions, they just don't focus on that stuff. So flacanide is a 1C sodium channel blocker, but you could just be aware that it blocks sodium channels. Okay. And I just want you to know that this can also be used for atrial fibrillation. All right. It's not high yield for step one, but for step two and three, you can be aware that for eight for AFib, we're going to do rate control before rhythm control. And if rate control fails with beta blocker or verapamil, then we can move to uh, rhythm control. And flacanide is often uh, a first choice, okay, if the patient doesn't have structural heart disease, coronary artery disease, etc. The point is, it's the wrong fucking answer. Choice C, ibutilide, wrong answer. This is also a potassium channel blocker similar to amiodarone. Uh, I've seen this on offline NBME, NBME material for step one. You need to know uh, that this can cause torsades, okay, similar to amiodarone, all right? So uh, flocainide can do it as well, uh, interestingly. It's prorhythmic. I mean, pretty much all of these drugs can cause torsades. It's just a matter of what does the USMLE want? They want you to know amiodarone. And ibutilide, notably, can cause torsades, okay? It's a sinusoidal arrhythmia, uh, arrhythmia. I should have mentioned that before, okay? Sinusoidal wave pattern. And it's uh, very dangerous because that can uh, descend into outright ventricular fibrillation, which is fatal. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, procainamide, wrong answer. This is a sodium channel blocker. You need to know that this can cause drug-induced lupus, okay? So we talk about... Uh, Drugs with uh, anti causing antihistone antibodies, okay, so hydralazine, isoniazid, procainamide, penicillamine, uh, minocycline as examples. You don't have to memorize those per se. Don't worry. You should just be uh, aware that if a patient receives a drug such as an antiarrhythmic, procainamide in particular, and then let's say it gets arthritis, mediastinitis, pleuritis, okay, that's drug-induced lupus, antihistone antibodies. Wrong fucking answer. Choice E, quinidine is the correct answer, okay? This is also a sodium channel blocker, antiarrhythmic. You need to know this causes a weird condition called synchonism or kinkonism, okay? C-I-N-C-H-O-N-I-S-M, okay? Synchonism, kinkonism, because because of quinidine is sort of the quote-unquote mnemonic, uh, but synchonism equals headache plus tinnitus, 
Okay, very fucking weird. I agree with you on that one, but that's what US Assembly wants you to know. Okay, so this patient has headache, has tinnitus, ear ringing, and that's just synchronism. That's quinidine. Okay, it's not that dramatic or complicated. And quinidine can also cause thrombocytopenia. All right, so a pretty much identical question shows up in one of the offline NBME exams for step one. All right, you know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel and I appreciate your time. That's it.